an introduction to solipsism. So what is solipsism? Solipsism from Latin, solus, meaning alone, in ipse, meaning self, is the philosophical idea that only one's own mind is sure to exist. And right away we've run into trouble, as we can see within the very definition of solipsism itself we find a hidden self-defeating counterproductive identifier framing solipsism as a philosophical idea already downgrades the integrity of the position likening the truth of this self-evident locus to just a concept in the consciousness of a thinking mind what can we tell from this definitional arrangement is that Whoever originally coined the phrase solipsism, more than likely ancient Greek establishment skeptics, wanted to assign a negative stigma to the truth of the position, so as to maintain the overall disempowered disposition of the populace at large, which means, of course, supremacy via mind enslavement a.k.a. the conditioning that identifies matter as dominant over the mind. That power and authority is determined and subsequently reigned with an iron fist thereafter by the particularities of material configurations. This is the bedrock of the externalization mindset. The mental tendency to assign power and control to a perceived extrinsic phenomena. Simply put, that riches and weapons rule the mind and bodies of men and serve to enforce the corresponding dictums thereof tricking a very abstract, limitless, ethereal agency to become obscured from its own naturally superior position and become anchored into a deceptively induced voluntary subservience to a very concrete, limited, dense, and unbeknownst to itself, self-created, manifested inventory. Therefore, to ensure that this conditioned state of mind stays intact, awareness, intuition, and any other non-analytical process relational introspective factor must be associatively conflated with the thinking function. Once this is accomplished, the natural state that comprises a clear and obvious overt clarity of mind can then be justifiably dismissed as just merely a conceptualization, a fanciful idea that isn't actually the case. This reveals the negative connotation preemptively stuff-loaded into the topic of solipsism, guised as an inherent quality but actually more designed to help the opponents of the so-called philosophy to repudiate it, rather than to serve in any honest purpose as a definition or classification. To even call solipsism a philosophy in the first place is to degrade its truth value. And this isn't surprising, as this kind of dishonest tactic is very endemic in philosophy to try and fortify one's argument by peppering the rhetoric with unnecessary buzzwords and pejoratives, which are more appeals to emotion than attempts to engage in rational discourse. Strong positions need no pejoratives. It's too bad that this isn't a general rule of argumentation. 
If you think you have a solid reasoning, then drop the pejoratives. But, of course, most of you can't do that. Because if you do, then you won't have that much of an argument left. Anyway, now that we've ascertained the dubious intentions behind the origination of the label solipsism, what then is the honest truth about the implications of that which is called solipsism? The pure, unobscured recognition of awareness as the primary foundation. Meaning this is a fundamental truth of anything that we could look to call an existence. Awareness is the rudimentary default. And then comes thoughts, ideas, concepts, and the experiences of people, places, and objects. And it seems that this is an important clarification that needs to be repeatedly highlighted. Solipsism is the illumination that results from awareness becoming aware of itself. Then through the lucidity of this recognition, the facilitation of a direct knowing, that awareness precedes anything that awareness can possibly be aware of. Therefore, this foundation is the truth of what is inherently found to be the case, as opposed to a theoretical concept of a philosophical proposition concerning a merely ideological supposition about the nature of reality. Herein lies the basic premise of solipsism. Now, is the truth of this basic premise debatable? Some of you may think that this is a silly question, but trust me when I say it's an issue that is still very much in contention, despite the obvious nature of it. This is what you can expect from awareness-denying externalists who want to keep challenging the interconnectivity of reality with the mind with a million different inventory items, proposing the same type of argument with a different specific over and over and over again, thinking, indeed, hoping, that maybe one of these specifics is going to be sufficient enough to delude the solipsist from seeing what he already knows to be true. Makes you wonder who exactly the externalist is really trying to convince, no? But really, if you think this is an issue that is up for an argument, then one simple question needs to be asked. Are you a zombie? I ask this because if you think foundational awareness is a debatable premise, or that there is some other kind of actual truth about reality that is arguable, then this means you are placing stock in theories of pure faith by glossing over the clear and present overlooking that which contextualizes your point of reference. So whether intentionally or not, either you are doing this in some type of intellectual malfunction, or you just simply don't possess any awareness, which would technically make you a zombie. So what's it gonna be? Either you are aware or you are not aware. If you are aware, then awareness is not a debatable or arguable issue. If not, then you don't have any awareness. Which means you kind of don't have any business engaging in philosophical discourse to begin with. I'm sorry to say this. But if you feel compelled to debate this premise, 
then it must mean that either you somehow deny or doubt your own awareness, or the only other explanation possible. You are a walking zombie. In the case of the latter, there's no conversation to have. As nothing can be derived from an interaction with an NPC. But Sage, all this means is that you feel sure your view isn't debatable or arguable. But you are arriving at a conclusion based on your views of it through the biased filter of the Metasage. No. It isn't a view. It's awareness itself. No views are possible without it. I'll say it again. Awareness isn't a perceptible. Awareness is aware of perception. This is an invincible solipsistic axiom that cannot be denied. So don't get it twisted. I don't have views of it. It is already that which allows any viewing to occur. And this is what I am asserting. A truth of which, due to your unrelenting hard-headed resistance, you are apparently incapable of processing. But Sage, obviously there is some thing responsible for reality. But there is no way to know if your encounters with awareness as a foundational source of origin are legitimate in any way. My encounters with it, huh? See what you're doing. Awareness completely composes the essence of your existentiality. Yet you imagine that there is some other responsible agency out there. And something is responsible for reality. I think you are referring to appearances when you say this about a so-called reality, as opposed to the actual reality, that which projects all realities. No thing is responsible for that which gives context to realities, but it nevertheless produces all things. Stop looking for some angle that's going to come port as a saving grace and absolve you of responsibility. There isn't any angles to exploit. What you call a reality is a purely mental phenomena, of which physicality is a very shallow elementary temporal aspect. This is why it's a bit ludicrous to believe the source of this agency to be located somewhere externally. The concept of external being based solely on how projections of awareness appear in a reflection, not on any initial awareness of the production and projection of these features. It is experienced with the mind. And no one can even address this question without the framework of a mind. Yet, somehow, the context of the mind remains a disputed issue. So these are the general ideas and related philosophical issues that surround solipsism, which we'll delve into with more depth in future installments of this series. And, of course, post any questions, comments, or contentions below.